This is question number 53 from book number one based on the 2020 NEC, and this is electricaltime.com. The secondary side of a transformer has an FLA, and that we call that the full load amps of 124.9 amps and a voltage of 208Y, and that's going to be three phase. What is the max sized overcurrent protective device required on the 480Y three phase primary side where there will be no overcurrent protection on the secondary side? And we got a couple of choices here. We've got 70 amps, 80 amps, 100 amps and 125 amps just want to take 30 seconds to let you know what we do here at electricaltime.com we do online electrical classes from the comfort of your home and then we also have this free service so if you click on the subscribe for free nec questions monday through friday you'll get an nec code question and an answer sent to your email all right so back to our video and the answer to this question is going to be a and that's going to be 70 amps all right so first question we're going to ask ourselves is what article are we talking about here and that's going to be for transformers and that's going to be article 450 and let's take a look in our textbook so here we go we got article 450 for transformers that's within chapter four equipment for general use then when we're in article 454 transformers we take a look at the parts and then we find part one for general provisions and then we find table 450.3b which is called the max over current protection for transformers 1000 volts and less before we begin to solve this problem we need to understand a basic principle of transformer electrical theory in that the power going into the transformer on the primary side is equal to the power going out on the secondary side, assuming that the transformer is 100% efficient, which is not possible. However, we make this assumption for the purpose of these exam questions. In other words, the VA of the primary is equal to the secondary VA. Since we know the secondary VA by the product of, so we've got 208 volts times 1.732 for three phase, and then we multiply that by 124.9 amps, and that's going to give us 44,996 VA. That's going to be the secondary VA. And you might be asking yourself, hey, Steve, where did you come up with these numbers and this formula? Well, that's easy. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to do something here really special. So I hope you're watching this video and not just listening to it. But if you're listening to it, that's okay, too. All right, so let's go back to the question. And let's identify what the VA, and we're going to call that the power, is on the secondary side of this transformer. And once we've identified the VA or the power, and you want to also think of that as watts as well, and, and that's kind of okay. It's not exactly right, but, you know, just to get the concept out there. So let's find out what the power is on the secondary side of this transformer and i'm going to think about the pi formula so i'm going to write that down over here all right so i'm going to draw my circle like that and we're going to put um, the pi in here p i e all right so what do we know so far on the secondary side we know that we've got the amps of 124.9 and we know that we got 208 volts y three phase all right so what we do not know we don't know p which is for power so let's let's see how that formula works so what we're going to do now is we're going to take p which is now equal to i times e so now we're going to do p again 
and I is equal to 124.9 amps, 124.9 amps. And we're going to multiply that by the voltage. So in this case, our voltage is 208 volts times 1.732. So let's take this down. P is now equal to 124.9 amps times the product of 208 volts times 1.732. And then we get this number down here and we saw it over here. And that's exactly what we did over here. We took the 208 volts times 1.732. So I'm going to continue here. And that comes out to be, I believe, and I don't have a calculator in front of me, uh, 360.256. And I hope I'm right on that. All right, so now P is going to equal that magic number that we just came up with down here of 44,996, right? So that's going to be 44,996, and that's going to be VA, all right? So when we're talking about transformers, you know, normally we see KVA, and that's thousands. So when we're looking at a transformer, you know, we're going to pick a standard size transformer and a standard size transformer is for this one is probably going to be about 45 uh, kVA. So I'm going to write that down 45 kVA, which is equal to 45,000 VA. All right. And that's how we got those numbers down there. Let's go back into the textbook. All right, so since we are assuming that the primary and secondary VAs are equal, and since we know that the secondary VA is 44,996, the primary VA is also equal to 44,996 VA. Let's use the pi formula to determine the FLA for the primary side of the transformer. So all we're going to do here, again, you know, I have a derivative of the pi formula. So I'm going to draw it down over here. So I got P, I, and E. All right, we'll do the circle. So what do we know so far on the primary side of the transformer? Do I know P? Yeah, I know P because I figured out P on the secondary side and the primary side for P and the secondary side for P is going to equal the same number. So I know that and that's going to be the 44,996 VA. Do I know my voltage? Yes, I do. Because in the question here, we told you that the voltage on the primary was going to be 480Y, three phase. So let's go back down here and I can highlight the voltage. So I know the voltage. I just don't know the amps. So that's why we've got this formula here where I is equal to P divided by E. And that's how we came up with that. All right, so let's continue. So I is going to equal... 44,996 divided by 480 volts times 1.732. And that's because we have three phase here. And let's take it down to the next step. I is equal to 44,996 divided by 831. And where do we get 831.36? We got that from over here from the product of 480 volts times 1.732. So I is going to equal 54.1 amps. All right. And that's going to be the amps for the transformer on the primary side. And we're going to call that the FLA. All right. So let's continue. Since we will be using a standard size transformer, our calculated VA of 44,996 
will require us to use a 45 kVA transformer, which is 45,000 VA, which also gives us the same number, 54.1 amps. And again, we get that by 45,000 VA divided by 831.36, and that's going to equal 54.1 amps. Okay, next, and we're, and we're still going on with this question. All right, it's not finished yet. So go to table 450.3b, look for the primary protection only in the table. And if you don't have your code book handy, don't worry, I'm going to show you the table in a little bit in this video. And then we also say here that the secondary protection uh, was not specified in the question. Since the FLA is 9 amps or more, multiply the FLA of 54.1 by 125% and we get 67.6 amps. All right, so let's look at the table now, 450.3b, and see if we can figure this out. And also, don't forget that, you know, we took that FLA from the primary side and we multiplied it by 125 percent and we got this number of 67.6 amps so let's find out why we multiplied it by 125 percent all right so here is the table and i'm just going to speak real quick about this there's something called the nfpa link it's having the code book on your phone I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic tool by the NFPA. They did a great job on it. And you can just go to their website, nfpa.org. I'm not, um, I don't work for the NFPA, but I got to tell you, it's such a great tool. Um, it has really changed the way that I do my electrical inspections. And when I need to find something quick, I go there and I can find it. But I still have my code book, you know, in my car. All right, so this is the table, 450.3b, and this is called the max rating or setting of overcurrent protection for transformers 1,000 volts and less as a percentage of the transformer rated current. And we got that transformer rated current, and that was the number which was 54.1 amps. And then we multiplied that by 125%. And then we got 67.6 uh, amps. All right, so let's go back to the table here. So remember I said that we're only going to be protecting the primary side. We are not going to be protecting the secondary side in this example. So now we have to look over here where it says protection method. And we can see here where it says primary only protection. And that's what we're looking for. Then we look at the next set of columns and we see currents of 9 amps or more. And, you know, 54.1 amps is more than 9 amps. So that's why we're going to be using uh, that column there. But we also have some other columns here. We have currents less than 9 amps. And then we have currents less than 2 amps. All right, but we're not using those. We are going to be using the currents of 9 amps or more. And it tells us that it's going to be 125%. And then it tells us to look at note number 1. And let's read that together. So it says, where 125% of this current does not correspond to a standard rating of a fuse or non-adjustable circuit breaker, a higher rating that does not exceed the next higher standard rating shall be permitted. And when you're looking at a table and there are notes to the table, those notes are enforceable, you know, by us electrical inspectors. But if you see something called an informational note, informational notes are not enforceable, but notes to tables are. So if a table has an informational note, it's not enforceable. But if it says it's a note, it's enforceable. All right. And that's why we use that 125% in our solution so far. Next, um, you know, and we just read about this, you know, in about note number one, 
to the table tells us that if the current does not correspond to a standard size fuse or non-adjustable circuit breaker, that a higher rating that does not exceed the next higher standard rating shall be permitted. Now we're going to go to table 240.6a, and we see that the next uh, standard size breaker is going to be 70 amps, and that's going to be our answer. All right, so let's go to table 240.6a together in our code book. And I'll take you here real quick so you can see that. Again, we've got our NFPA link and then the NFPA.org. All right, so we're looking for a standard size breaker that's going to be good enough for the 67 amps and change that we had in our question, and that was 67.6 amps. Obviously, they're not going to make a breaker for 67.6 amps. And that's why note one in the table that we just read allowed us to use the next size up as long as it's a standard size breaker. So just remember that number, 67.6 amps. So we're going to go to this table here, uh, 240.6a, and we are going to see that, you know, 60 amps over here, that's going to be too small. So... There we go. We got our 70 amps over there, and that's how we, we found the answer to this question. All right, so we went over a lot of things here, and uh, feel free to watch this video over and over again. There's a lot of good information in here. You know, we went over uh, the two tables. We went over, you know, some very basic uh, transformer electrical theory where, you know, we're just going to say for exam purposes, that the power going in is equal to the power going out but we know that's not true because there's going to be some losses you know as you know the transformer does the work that it has to do all right so again the answer to this question is going to be a and that is going to be 70 amps and uh, it's going to be reference uh, table 450.3b